Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, Tim Riches of Digital Badges. Uh, 24%, uh, nearly a quarter of young people told us in our research that they would like digital badges to be recognised uh, by educators and employers. So to tell us more about this, would you please welcome Tim Riches. A round of applause for Tim, please. Hi there. So you've been sat down for a few minutes listening to presentations. So I was going to do something I was going to do at the end, but I'll do it at the beginning. Uh, and that's to turn, bearing in mind everything you've heard today about digital skills and, and uh, thinking about recognising skills, just turn to the person to the left of you and share an idea about, think about um, what badge would you create and who would you give it to? If you could create any badge, what would you create and who would you give it to? And I'll give you a, a, just a minute to do that before we get into the presentation. <clears throat> Great. Great. Okay. Well, I'm sure there's been lots of interesting and exciting ideas shared. So, uh, and all suitable for an education audience, I've no doubt. So, I'm Tim Riches from Digital Me, and I'd like to talk to you today about a new technology called Mozilla Open Badges, um, which provides you as educators. Um, or as employers to start recognizing the kind of skills we've been talking about today, the kind of skills which you know are really important for young people to succeed in life, uh, but particularly to take advantage of all the amazing opportunities that the digital world provides us. And I'm always looking around for an image that kind of sums up the current state of play in assessment today, you know, whether it's a test paper or kids sitting in rows looking at the teacher at the front. I think I've found an image which sums it up uh, and just see what you think. The isolator. I don't know if you've come across this before. It's an invention in the early 1900s. And it says uh, at the bottom, if you can't read that, it says the author in his private study is aided by the isolator. Outside noise has been eliminated. The worker can concentrate with ease at the work in hand. And through those goggles there, apparently you can see about two lines of text at any one time. And there's were constant danger of being uh, suffocated. It never actually made it to the mass market. I don't think this is what's going to answer our, our troubles today. But I do think that it's a good analogy for the assessment system because we measure such a narrow range of intelligence and we judge young people on such a narrow range of intelligence. Um, so that's, that's my view. But what does industry think? Well, this is uh, an interesting quote from uh, Confederation of British Industry that schools are becoming exam factories that were becoming obsessed with measuring the test than actually uh, uh, developing the skills. And I'm sure John Cridland wouldn't mind me rephrasing him. And I, I, if I was to put it in a, another way, I would say that what employers are saying to schools and to education is, look, the world is moving so fast at the moment. What we need from education are tech-savvy, problem-solving geek ninjas who know about computer science, who can come in and actually figure out what to do, not, less, not necessarily just how to do it. Um, and we need those problem solvers and we need those problem finders. Um, in terms of Google, this was an interesting quote uh, from them last year, is that qualifications are worthless as a criteria for hiring. And um, this is the guy who's in charge of HR, in charge of HR and hiring for Google. And he talked about five different characteristics he was looking for from Google employees. Um, yes, as Tom was saying, you know, he, that you want the computer science. They definitely want that. They want the coding skills. You've got to have high quality coding skills. But the other things they want is they want good learners, people who know how to learn. And that means people who are curious, um, they're used to failing, they've learned how to fail, and they've picked them up and they've tried again, and they're good team workers. So people who know when to come forward with expertise and share that expertise, and people who know when to step back and let other people contribute as well, it's those things that they're looking for. And we've got to ask ourselves, not just in Wales, but in England as well, is the education system developing those kind of skills? And I would argue that the only way to develop those skills is through projects. It's through setting young people problems and then for them to come together, work in teams to solve those problems and to make stuff using, using code, using creativity, using design, using communication skills. That's the only way to do it. And 
I haven't really seen in any curriculum that making a gender right at the fore, and if it is, it's not assessed or it's not valued. So um, it's against this backdrop that Mozilla created the Open Badges Standard. It's a digital way to capture and communicate any kind of skill. So it's a way to capture that skill, to give someone a badge containing data, information about what's been learned, and then it provides the person with a way to share those skills on the web. And it's an open standard, so it's a bit like email. It's not owned by anybody at all. It's open source, so you can pick it up uh, and use it. Um, and Digital Me have been working with the support of uh, Mozilla, uh, Nominate Trust, uh, and now the Badge Alliance as well, um, to help organizations develop open badges in the UK and internationally as well. So let's dig into what open badges are in a bit more detail. Uh, so after three years of research uh, and funding, uh, this was the conclusion. Image files with stuff in them. But it's important stuff. Uh, and here's a great image from Kyle Bowen, which, which just lays it out in layman's terms. So it has a description of what has been learned, a description of the badge. It has the criteria, so what you've done to earn that. It has a link to evidence, crucially. So it can be any kind of digital evidence. It can be a video, it can be a web page, it can be a, a computer game that's been programmed. That evidence is embedded within the badge. And here's what badge that we developed at Digital Me. It was for our sports reporter program. Badges were, were fantastic for us because we've been running programs, education programs for years, but we'd never really had an effective way to recognize skills. So within this badge, it's a supporter to reporter badge. It's a badge for developing world of work skills, um, media skills through becoming a sports journalist for real. Um, so the evidence there is the pictures of them actually doing that sports reporting for real. Um, who's endorsed and who's behind it. So we developed some badges for 2012. And it's also part of a badge program. It's part of a set of other badges that you can develop. So that's what's inside a badge, all of that information. And that really takes us on, doesn't it, a few steps from paper-based certificates. Um, so in order to give a badge, you need a badge issuing platform. And there are several, or you can build a platform yourself. Uh, so there are several platforms out there. So this is the badge library within MakeWaves. 50,000 open badges have been issued from here. 500 badges created by teachers, and you can earn the S2R badges there. Moodle have developed a platform. Mozilla have something called Mozilla Badge Kit. Pearson's are developing a platform. Microsoft are developing a platform, etc. But you need a platform in order to take that metadata uh, and put it together securely with a badge and then issue it to a person. You issue it via their email. So where can I put them? Well, key to the concept of open badges is something called the backpack. And because all of those technology platforms that I've just mentioned support the same open standard, it means that all of the badges that are earned can be put within a backpack, and you own that data. And I think that's a really, really important point. So it's not, not about a new VLE. It's about an open standard which is supported, but you own that learning data. And here's what a backpack looks like. Um, not quite as exciting as the last slide, but it's a web page where you gather all of those credentials together, and then importantly, you can um, put those badges into collections and then share them out onto different websites, on CVs, on your LinkedIn profile, on Twitter, or, or wherever it might be. Um, so, again, it's your data, and you know, obviously, you might not want to share your finger painting badge you've earned in primary school or something on your LinkedIn profile, so you decide what you share and where you share it. So who are using open badges, you might ask? Well, there's 300,000 badges being issued so far. Uh, 50,000 backpacks, that's 50,000 people have backpacks where they're storing open badges now. And you'll recognize some of those brands there. So NASA, for example, have endorsed a robotics uh, badge for robotics making. Um, and Chicago uh, City have done a city-wide badging program. We've got Jade here at the back somewhere. Wave your hand, Jade from the Badge Alliance and Mozilla, who they've been working on um, uh, this citywide uh, badging program. So lots of brands you recognize. As I mentioned before, we've been working in the UK to work with organizations here to figure out how we can recognize skills right the way from primary school and then connect it, all being well right the way through to jobs. I'm going to show you a short video now uh, from Telefonica, who are working on a badge program. So if we could roll the video, that'd be great. Today we've been working with uh, the 
think big teams here to start thinking about how open badges can be used within their Think Big programme. Mozilla Open Badges is a new technology, a new open standard for communicating skills across the web. The Nominet Trust have supported Badge the UK, um, which is fantastic because it gives us the opportunity to really demonstrate um, how open badges could be used to build this new skills currency for young people. Today has been a, a really great opportunity for us to really think in a bit more detail about the skills that young people gain through their participation in Think Big and for us to really think about how we map that into uh, the badge framework. For Telefonica there's definitely a really clear view that there's a real opportunity actually from an HR and recruitment perspective for us to start considering the role that badges might play in our recruitment strategies and in our recognition of the skills and capabilities that applicants might come with. So today we went to visit Snowfields Primary School in London to see how they're getting on with badges. So a badge is effectively an image file with lots of information baked into it. So information like what someone's had to do to earn it and the evidence that shows that they've done that and that's what makes them so exciting. Lots of badges exist. You can get badges for um, coding, for lots of digital technical skills, but you can also get badges for music skills, performing arts. So there's badges for everything. We've been running a mile and then you've got to come back up, you've got to write what you did, and then you'll go to the map, go left. That's how you read your badge. In terms of changes and kind of the way they've approached their learning has drastically changed. So we've got really reluctant writers who it can be quite a struggle sometimes to, to get them to pull out a bit of work in, in the middle of a lesson. However, if you say, well, this is going to be for your badging work on Make Craze, this is going to be one of your badge missions, this is going to be shared with kind of our school community and now our network community there, they get really enthusiastic and really excited about it. They will learn new digital literacy skills now that will stay with them and has to stay with them probably for the rest of their lives because of the way the world is at the moment. And we're teaching them to learn A, off their own backs, from each other, collaboratively, um, by doing their own independent research. And those skills are going to be huge for them when they, when they kind of grow up a little bit more. The main challenge facing the Badge the UK programme right now is building credibility into badges and making sure that they are recognised externally by employers, by schools, by universities, um, so that young people um, see the value in engaging with, in, with badges. Okay, so um, we've heard a lot today about moving from ideas through into action. And you know, you had a chance at the beginning just to very briefly think about what badge you would uh, create. So I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. Um, you can start doing them now, or, or we could talk later. But the first is to tell us what your idea is to create, uh, what I, uh, your idea is for a badge. So uh, if you could hashtag it, if you're a Twitter person, to open badges. Um, and Digital 2014. If you want to include me in the conversation, it's at T Riches. Because actually, one thing to really stress about open badges is nobody's going to create these badges and give them to you. They're all, it's all about you actually doing the hard work, I'm afraid. So it's about employers coming together with educators, designing these skills, working with people, local employers, like Telefonica we just saw, to open up opportunities for work experience and jobs so that we build real value into the technology. If you share your idea with us here on digitalme.co.uk forward slash badge the UK, we will issue you with an open badge for sharing your idea which will give you uh, the opportunity to just go through an experience open badges, earning one and putting it in the backpack. If you want to go now and create a backpack, you can uh, just search for open badges backpack and that'll come um, straight up. So um, I hope you've enjoyed the presentation, just got a, a good idea of what open badges are. But I'm hoping that next year we'll be able to come back and see some young people on the stage, see some employers on the stage talking about the badges they've created together and what difference it's made to them as employers and young people. So thanks very much. Thank you.